for church. May God be with us.
every path, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance. I believe you are my fortress, you are my portion, you are my hiding place. I believe. Lynette Barker, and I will be your liturgist today. Our reading today is from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verses 5 through 31, New International Version. This is one of the most exciting stories of the Bible. Listen. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, What have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chariots, along with all of the other chariots of Egypt, with officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh and king of Egypt so that he pursued the Israelites 
who were marching out boldly. The Egyptians and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops, pursued by the Israelites and overtook them. As they camped by the sea near Pi Hahira, opposite Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them, and I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Israel and Egypt. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided. And the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, Let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back into its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, their servant, his servant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, it's the tradition in our church to say good morning. So on the count of three, let's say good morning. One, two, three. Good morning. Good morning. I have a question for you this morning. Have you ever been in a situation where you had to completely trust God to protect you or to save you? You had no other options. That's kind of difficult to just trust God, right? So in today's story, we're going to hear how God brought his people out of a really bad situation and provided a way of escape for them in a really, really amazing way. Our Bible lesson today is about one of the most spectacular events in the entire Bible. So the Israelites had been slaves in Egypt for over 400 years, but the Pharaoh refused to let God's people go until God sent 10 plagues to all of Egypt. 
And through the ten plagues, God showed them that he was more powerful than the Egyptian gods, and that only he was worthy of being worshipped. So after so many bad things had happened, the Pharaoh finally decided that it was best to let the Israelites go. So the Israelites followed Moses out of Egypt. And the Pharaoh, after they had left, changed his mind again. So he sent his giant army to bring the Israelites back to Egypt. And the Israelites were caught between the army and the Red Sea. So we have some red waves over here on our Jesse tree today to represent that. I'm going to put some water on a plate to represent the big sea that they were trapped. So when God's people saw the Egyptian army and their chariots coming, they were really, really afraid. I'm putting some pepper into our plate. So here is this big sea, and they were afraid that the sea would just take them over, right? So if I put my finger in there, what happens? Can y'all see that? Nothing happens. My finger just gets covered with pepper. They were afraid that the sea would overtake them. But Moses said, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch God save you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea and God opened up a pathway through the water with a strong wind. So let's see what happens with God's help. Can you guys see that? It's kind of hard to see on our video, but can you see how all the pepper went away from my finger with God's help? So the people of Israel were able to walk right through the middle of the sea with walls of water on each side. The Egyptians had their horses and their chariots, and they followed the Israelites through the sea. But God twisted their chariot wheels and made it difficult for them to drive quickly. When the Israelites had reached the other side of the water onto dry ground safely, Moses, God said to Moses, he said, raise your hand over the sea again. And when Moses did, that water rushed right back on top of the chariots and horses and the entire army and they were drowned. The whole Pharaoh's army was drowned, but God's people were safe. When the people of Israel saw the mighty power that God had unleashed against the Egyptians, they were filled with awe. Imagine that. God caused the waters of the sea to separate. Can you imagine being at the beach and seeing that? That's kind of like our pepper trick, right? But on a giant scale. So God is powerful and he protected his people. He protects us too. So God showed the people that they could trust him. He showed him that he is good and he loves his people and he wants to take care of them and see them brought out of slavery and into a better life in a land that he would provide for them. So did you know that we are a lot like those Israelites? The people in the story were trapped by a Pharaoh's army in the Red Sea. So we might not be facing an army in our lives, but we are trapped by sin sometimes. Sin holds us captive, but, say, but thankfully God provides us a way to escape for us too. God saves us by sending Jesus to die for our sins. Now when we put our trust in Jesus, we can be free to live a life that he wants us to live. So will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for saving the Israelites. Thank you for showing us in big ways and in small ways of your power to save us. Remind us that when we feel afraid or confused, you protect us and rescue us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, I love you all and I miss you so much. I hope to see you soon. Have a great week. Bye-bye.
On Tuesday, January 19th, I rang this bell, our church bell. President Biden asked that all of us do that at the same time on the day before inauguration as a way to remember those who have died from COVID and as a way to bring our country together. And so Alyssa and I came out here, it was very cold, very windy, rainy, and we rang the bell in the cold and I was filled with such a sense of hope. This bell is used to call people to church. That's what it was put here for, so that everyone around would know that worship was beginning. And so, as I said, I was filled with a sense of hope. And I'm not naive enough to think that a new president is gonna change everything, or a vaccine is gonna put an end to the fear we face around this virus, or that anything we say or do is gonna end racism, at least not overnight. But I'm filled with a sense of hope, not in any of these things, but because of who God is. That God really does save. That God really does keep his promises. And so we are encountering the Bible through 40 words, and our word this week is deliverance. God offers us deliverance. God offers us salvation. And so this week we remembered the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. and his inspiring words. And we remembered that he didn't live to see the things that he preached about or hoped for, but that he inspired us to keep going for generations, to keep that vision alive of a, of a better world, of, of the world that God has promised us and that God is working through us to achieve those ends. And so we tell the story, tell the story from the book of Exodus of how God called Moses to lead his people from slavery to freedom. And we tell the story of how God intervened in their history. God brought plagues upon the Egyptians, but spared the Hebrew people. And the people were led out of the land of Egypt and Moses stood at the edge of the water. It was a moment of great fear as the Egyptians were behind them, the water was in front of them. But Moses stood before them and he said, the Egyptians that you see today, you will never see again. He raised his hands and God parted the water and they walked through the sea as if it was dry land. And then God brought the waters back over the Egyptians. And so I want you to think about the great act of faith that Moses did when he, when he said those words and when he raised his arms. The Egyptians that you see, you will never see again after today. He raised his arms and God acted. Imagine if that had gone differently. Imagine if he had said those inspiring words and raised his arms and nothing happened. Imagine how awkward that would have been. What a great act of faith it was for him to raise his hands and declare what would be because of his faith in God. That's what I felt like I was doing when I was ringing this bell because I can't call you back into our building yet. But it was an act of faith that Alyssa and I did together believing that we will. Just as Martin Luther King Jr. said those words, believing that the things he hoped for would come to pass, the dream that he had would be realized. And so as we're reading through the Bible in 2021, looking at our 40 words, whenever we get to a place where we don't understand or maybe don't believe, the questions we ask ourselves is what does this say about God and what does it say about us? So what does the story say about God? That God keeps his promises. That God actually acts in history and comes through when we step out in faith. And what does it say about us? It says that God uses us. God uses those of us who are faithful. 
What this story says is that God really does deliver us. And so this story, this moment in history is vitally important. And it's important in the Bible. There are so many references to it in the rest of the Bible. Direct and indirect, it said 167 references to this moment of God parting the Red Sea. Psalms and, and so much of the Bible goes back to this story because it's a reminder when we don't see God that we can say, remember who God is. Remember what God did. Remember how God acted in our history. Remember. And so there's so many things in the story that are timely. Um, if you don't want to read the whole book of Exodus or you can't, um, watch the Ten Commandments. Watch the Prince of Egypt. Watch one of these movies that tells the story and listen. Because so much in the story is timely today. It tells the story of people who fell into slavery because bondage doesn't happen overnight. Addiction, bondage happens slowly. Before we know it, we're bound and we can't get free. It's a story of, of midwives and, and Moses' mother and the people who defied the orders of the powers of the day and resisted and did the right thing. It's a story of a system of oppression and what it did to the people. It's a story of leadership. It's a story of speaking truth to power. It's a story of plagues descending on people and of God's people huddled together, protected from the plagues. So much in this Exodus story is timely today. And so I want you to hear it again. I want these words to ring in your ears. I want the church bell to ring in your ears so that we would remember who God is, that God saves, and that God uses us at times as his instruments of salvation. We Christians love to say that Jesus saves, and we love to say that we are saved. But I'm afraid sometimes all we do is make that a spiritual thing. We believe we are saved from hell and that we'll go to heaven. But let's think bigger than that. Let's imagine that God is big enough to physically save us, to save us from COVID, to save us from strife and division, to save us from all the kinds of bondage that we face. I look forward to the day when we can ring this bell and open the church doors wide. But until that time, I wanna call you to listen deeply to the story, to think deeply about this word deliverance, and to believe that it is real and it is possible. Amen.
watch your mailbox. We sent out um, our annual giving statements, your statements of how much you gave to the church this year. Um, if you haven't received that already, you should. If you don't receive it, let us know. I want to thank all of you for your giving to the church. Those of you who have given financially, those of you who have given of your time, your presence, your prayers, we are still standing firm. And so I want to ask you to continue to support your church, to give electronically, to send your giving into P.O. Box 69, to continue to pray for us, to continue to hope with us. Listen for the bell. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Like, comment, and subscribe.